Welcome to the show, folks. This is Guggen TV, and today we're catching hatchery trout. According to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife, the trout species is the fifth most popular game fish in America. And because of their ability to thrive in hatcheries, rainbow trout have now been introduced into most of the U.S. and inhabit many streams, lakes, and ponds throughout the entire country. In fact, many fishermen today can attribute their start in fishing to a local trout pond. And regardless of whether you're a beginner or a veteran fisherman, fishing at your local pond is a great way to just get out, relax and have a little fun. So how do you catch these popular fish at your local pond? Well, just like any other fish, it's all about knowing your target. So let's take a closer look. This is where hatchery fish grow up. And this is not this. Growing up in the hatchery, the water is always the perfect temperature. Your food is brought directly to you every day and you're even protected from any would-be predators. It's like growing up in a palace with your own personal servants and security guards. But the result of growing up like this is that these fish just don't know what their wild counterparts do. They don't know where the good food is. They don't know what's dangerous and what's safe. In fact, they really just don't know much of anything. And it's going to take some time for them to learn it all. So what does that mean for the angler that's trying to catch them? It means that your best bet is to focus on what they do know. And coming right out of the hatchery, there are two things that these fish know without a doubt. These fish are very sensitive to water temps, and they really like to be comfortable. For most trout species, that means being in water that's roughly 54 degrees Fahrenheit. Now they might not be able to find that perfect temp in your local pond, but they're going to try to get as close to that as they possibly can. That means that on hot days where the water is warm, they'll be down deep where the water is cooler. And on cold days where the water is close to freezing, they'll be up higher where the water is kept a little warmer by the sun. And once they're in that comfort zone, they'll do laps around the whole pond at just that depth without a single care or concern for any other factors. Again, they don't really know what they're doing or what they should be looking for, but they know what's comfortable and that's where they're going to stay. This equals food. Of course, the longer that they're in the wild, the more diverse their appetite will become. Because if it doesn't, they'll starve to death since there aren't any pellets in the wild. So eventually they will get to the point where they'll chase down your worm or lure, or whatever fake bug that happens to be in season. But imagine for a moment that one night someone burst through your door, came in and snatched you right out of your own home, then forced you into a container and shipped you off to some foreign country where you now had to figure out how to survive. Sure, you'd eventually get used to the local cuisine, even though it looked like this, or this, or every once in a while there'd even be a little of this. But after all of that, what would you do if someone then came by and dropped one of these on your table? You know exactly what you'd do. You would scarf down that piece of pie faster than you've ever eaten anything in your entire life. And that's exactly what hatchery trout will do anytime you put out pretty much anything that resembles the food they grew up on. You may not be putting out the real thing, but it's just got to look close enough to convince them that it is. Because by the time that they get it in their mouth and figure out that it's not what they thought it was, it'll be too late. And instead of finding dinner, they'll be on their way to becoming dinner. Like a lot of things in life, there are tons of different ways you can set up your gear to catch these fish. But one of my favorites is also one of the easiest setups out there. It's called a Carolina rig and it's put together with six simple parts. The main line coming off of your rod, a sliding weight, a swivel, a one to three foot leader made from light fishing line, a hook, and some floating bait. When your rig is properly set up, your weight should take your line down to the bottom. 
then the floating bait should keep itself and your hook up in the fish's strike zone. The main advantage to this rig is that you won't need to retie your gear if you end up needing to fish at a different depth. Simply reel it in and recast to a different area. But to ensure that the rig is working properly, there are two things that you'll need to check. You'll need to make sure that you have enough bait on your hook to keep it afloat. Otherwise, it'll just sink down to the bottom with your weight and the fish will never find it. If you're fishing in a pond with heavy vegetation, you need to make sure that your leader is long enough for the bait to float up above the weeds so that it's easy for the fish to clearly see it. Fishing in this manner for the newcomer, or even for young kids, can be boring at times. And if you're not paying attention to your rig, you can end up missing a bite and your fish can get away. So do yourself a favor and get a little bell to put on the end of your pole. It'll allow you to just sit back and enjoy the scenery. Or if you're taking kids, it'll allow them to play in the nearby sand while they wait. Then once you hear that bell, you can spring into action and set your hook. And that's all there is to it folks. Now get out there and get some fish.